Hey YouTube, Mark Kaufman here, and today I am going to be showing you how to sharpen a recurve or a hawkbill blade. Now, there's really no perfect way to do this. There's a lot of sharpening guru videos out there on how to sharpen this, this um, hawkbill blade. And there really are no good ways to go about it because it's kind of a tricky ordeal. And it, depending on how drastic the curve is, it can make it even harder. But these are a few ways that I approach this here. Now, um, this knife was actually sent to me by a viewer to sharpen. And I told him I would polish up the blades, which... I have, and I would sharpen all the blades for him. Now, he said that would be fine, and in exchange, I would be able to make a video out of it. So, here is the video finally, and this is going to be a live sharpening. I actually was really trying to think about how I wanted to do this. Did I want to uh, do a snippet, 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 snippet of how to do each part or did I want to do it live? And what I've decided is I'm just going to do it live. Um, you know, for me personally, I think seeing it done um, as, as it goes would actually help you more than it being a snippet, snippet, snippet. And it's kind of like, wow, okay, that's it in a five minute video. So I have a few stones behind me that I have not shown up here yet. Um, but for me personally, there are a few ways that I go about sharpening a hawk bill. Now, this knife actually has three knife blades on it. Now, for me personally, that is quite a bit. If it's not a stockman, if it's a utility knife or a, a well, I could say a multi-tool because technically it is since it has a bottle opener. But... You have three knife blades, and for me personally, I would prefer to have another tool or a saw or a fish scaler. But, um, well, Colonial, I believe this is Colonial, or is it Camillus? Uh, Colonial decided not to do that. Um, and if you're wondering what this is, that is a bad blister I got while gardening, so I'm sorry about that. It's ugly. Um, but the stone that I'm going to use for the main blade and the sheep's foot blade is going to be one of my favorites and that is the Norton combination bench, bench stone and this here is just a, a wonderful stone. The India stone here is probably one of the stones that I would recommend to almost anybody who wants to get into hand sharpening or free hand sharpening. Um, it does a quick job with almost any steel I've thrown onto it. I have even sharpened S110V on this thing and it does the job. So um, I would definitely recommend this stone. Now when it comes to a hawk bill blade, um, you have to take in a few aspects of the blade before you even start. And while I say that, let me get the blade out. So few things you need to think about, okay? Do you have a sharpening choil? Depending on the sharpening choil, how big is it? Um, how much room is there? Um, here, we have none, which is actually quite helpful, and I'll explain that later. But if you have a large sharpening choil, a thin diamond rod, as I tried to pick this up, up off of the silicon mat, um, if you have a thin one, it's gonna get caught in there, okay? So the thin one may not really work for you. So you may want to go with a larger diamond rod. And really with the diamond rod, you do not want to go straight down the blade. Um, you do not want to pull towards you. You just push away and then end at the end. And you can just start and go. And then once you get the groove, you kind of just go, okay? And you kind of start in that wedge right there and then kind of shove away from you, okay? You don't need to use a lot of force, especially on this knife. This knife is using a, I believe a 1065 carbon steel, but um, it's very soft. So then you just kind of do the same on the other side. Now the other side, you kind of have to pull away from yourself. You can't really push um, primarily because, well, you're not doing it this way. 
Um, so you kind of have to pull towards you and sometimes depending on how long your rod might be, you kind of have to start in different sections. So that is one of the downsides. This is a great tool to have. You can pick these up at Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops for almost nothing and they seem to do a good job in the field. Okay, so I'm going to go again over here. Okay, then I'm going to go again over here. And this is what I would call a good old fashioned grandpa um, field sharpening. Okay, now that is sharp. And I say sharp because there's a burr there. So I'm going to just attack it with this smaller diamond rod which I've actually used a little heavier than that other one. So it's gonna have kind of a finer grip, but then there's also not as much weight. So you're gonna get a finer cut there anyways. So we are now just doing that. And we are pretty much almost there. Burrs on the other side. Whoops, excuse me about that. So then we go down this way. And then we pretty much have an edge, okay? Now this edge is sloppy, okay? This is something that you are going to use probably in the garden, you're weeding, um, you are pruning, and you really just need a, an aggressive edge that's not pretty, okay? It works, it does the job, but it's not gonna be clean. Now, to be clear, this is actually very thick paper, so, um, but you see it kind of tears it away, okay? It's gonna be a rough edge. I wouldn't even call this to be extremely sharp, but when you're using this to cut up roots or very, very, very thick materials, um, that heavier edge might be better, okay? Now, keep in mind, I didn't spend a lot of time on that, okay? If it was me, I would actually spend quite a bit more time on it and maybe even mount it on something or in a vise, okay? So you can already see that that has already helped. And what this is going to do if you mount it or have a desk in front of you is it's going to help you achieve a steady and accurate angle. Okay. So you can already see that that is substantially better than just taking it in your hands and holding it. So holding it onto something or on a desk and I need a little more time spent near the tip there. Yep. And I think knocking it off there will do it. And then one pass, two pass, one pass, two pass. And now let's see. Okay, this technically should be much better. Which again, this is thicker paper. I wish I had thinner paper. But trust me, the edge feels a little more refined. But this is not always the best option. If you have a bench stone or even a smaller stone, what you can do is prop it up on the angle, take it in the corner there. And this is where taking into account the size of the sharpening choil is important because if you have a very large one, that corner is always going to get caught. But over here, I'm just going to slide it back and forth through the stone. And this is on the corner. And if you really need to round out the, the, the stone or round out the corner, or if you have like a dent or a chip, you can always improve the corner or round it out with some sandpaper. Okay. Now this already is doing a much better job than the diamond files. Diamond files are going to be great if you're out in the field. Um, this type of stone is just a soft arc. And this here is actually really the way I go about sharpening a hawk bill. Um, th this is a really good way to do it and it really does improve the edge significantly um, in contrast to that. So that is one way to do this. Now, if you're in the field, you'd be doing it this way. If you're at home, I would actually suggest to pull out some mineral oil. This is one of my daughter's infant Tylenol um, 
syringes, but it does a wonderful job of holding mineral oil in it. Okay, so what the mineral oil is now going to do is it's going to hydrate the stone, it's going to help remove debris from the stone, and it's going to also help with the sharpening. So this is another way to do it. This is just going to improve the edge quite a bit, okay? Now, let's say you don't want to do that. You need to remove a lot of material. Then you could probably even use one of these stones. And this stone here is going to be very coarse. So um, you don't necessarily have to have it in this. You can always prop something under it, okay, like so. And what you can do, let me get the other stone that I have here, which is a medium ceramic stone, and you can just prop it like that, put some mineral oil over here, okay, just put it on your finger, and then just dab, put it on your finger, and then dab, and you can go about it this way. Now, this is if you need to remove a lot of material, okay? You can start in the corner there, and then come on through. Start in the corner, come on through and let your finger, your index finger, actually stop the end of the blade, okay? So you can just, and then stop, 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 you see? And this is another way to do it. Very similar to the way I was doing it on that smaller stone, but this is going to be substantially more coarse and it's going to remove more material. Now that is going to give it a rough edge and you're going to have to clean it up, but it definitely works. Now let me get um, something in here just to clean off this edge. And already we have a burst, so then we can start again. And then as you come on this side, you can just hold your finger on the tip there and that will do a sufficient job of stopping the tip of the edge from running off and maybe you in the end point of that scratching up the blade. So this technique works also. Now, personally, this is, for me, might be different for you, but for me, this is the ideal way to do it for me. Just do it progressively through here, and then you have a good edge, Pretty, pretty substantial burr there, but we're going to remove that as we progress through here. So pretty much we now have an established angle there. And I'm actually holding this pretty high because, well, this is a older knife and I want to have a lot of life out of that for him. But what you can do now is loosen this up, take the stone out. Pop it in, tighten that back up, and then repeat. So throw some of this mineral oil on the tip of your finger and just kind of spread that all on the edge there. And now we are talking. And you can already hear that this is gonna be substantially smoother. So you can see there, that's removing material. And again, use the end of your finger to just catch that tip. You want to keep that tip nice and sharp. And then, there we go. So you can see that is an edge being created there. So give me one second here. Clean that off. And... Now we repeat with the other side. Now let's say you don't have a stone, you don't have any of this, but you've got a Ken Onion Work Sharp Sharpener, okay? There is a way to do this on one of those also, but you have to be very quick. And you can just take the blade through there and freehand sharpen it through the belt grinder, okay? Now, if you do that, you have to be very, very quick about it, and you always kind of have to keep a curve, 
okay? Because when you do that, you're going to be on a flat surface and that can actually really mess this up. So that is one way to do it, but you gotta be very quick. Okay, now just using a little less pressure. Just less pressure there. Okay, and we've got a pretty good edge coming up there. Now, let's say this was my knife and I'm sharpening this for myself. I would probably go um, very coarse on this edge and then on the main blade go kind of coarse like a medium. But then on a small blade, I would try to keep that like razor sharp. So then you've got the small blade or sheep's foot blade for like surgical cuts. And then you've got one for gardening and it's already cutting better, okay? You can see there that the cut is much cleaner. Keep in mind, this is a very thick piece of paper. But you can see there, it's cutting much better. Instead of tearing, it is now cutting. Now, what I'm going to do, now that I have that angle, the edge kind of, um, I, I wouldn't say established, I would say it is um, created. Um, from that, I'm going to actually put this stone away. Okay. And I am now going to skip this stone. You could move to this stone here. Okay. You could move to this. This is a Spiderco medium ceramic bench stone. But um, I don't see the need for it because what I'm going to now do is take the Spyderco ceramic rod, which it's in the holder for this um, diamond rod, but I actually find it to be very useful in this one. I use this in the kitchen a lot. And then what you do is just slide it back and forth here. And what you can do here is this is actually creating a smooth edge smoothing out the edge, refining it. And there we go. So that is refining the edge there, okay? We got a smoother edge, woo, we got a nice nice burr and then we just do the same over here and you know what if you really wanted to you could just do this on a lot of these instructional videos i just feel like bob ross you know just kind of relaxed now gently painting the trees put those trees wherever you want remember this is your creation <laughs> oh man that man rest in peace what a what a great guy um, but this here is almost done. Now, after this, what you can do is you can take a leather strop and strop this. Now, I do not have a leather strop. Still really rough. using a little more pressure a little more pressure now you're probably wondering how do you keep your ceramic stones clean I actually use barkeepers friend um, that actually does a wonderful job of getting all the steel out of it what you're doing now is just being a little more aggressive here. Okay. And we have a pretty good edge there. Now I'm just using the weight of the ceramic rod. There we go. Yep. Just one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. 
That's much better. Now, break off the burr. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, now what can I use to demonstrate this? Because this really thick piece of paper is really not doing me any justice. Uh, but, well, this thick piece of paper was really a poor choice for this. Let me see in here what I've got, okay? Really quick, really quick. What do I got, what do I got, what do I got, what do I got? And I have no paper in here. So I am going to just leave that the way it is, but we're gonna take a close up on the edge there. So there we've got the edge right there, over here. And I can actually see that this edge is still pretty rough on the end there. So just a little more force, increasing the angle just a little bit. Holding it steady. All right. And substantially better. Substantially better. Oh yeah, just needed a little more force. And sometimes that's what's needed. Sometimes that is what is needed on this. A little more force. So that is pretty much how I cover and sharpen um, a hawkbill blade. I'm going to refine this just a little bit more um, off camera, but that is essentially what I do. Now I am going to pull the India stone back out because this is the other reason why I like the India stone is because it sharpens things up very quickly. So I'm going to use the coarse edge here. I'm going to put just a little bit of mineral oil all across here. Mix that in and I'm going to sharpen the rest of this knife up. Get all of that mineral oil there. This is going to be very quick. <clears throat> Okay. Now, the other blades we have is the sheep foot blade, which has nothing but a burr on it. So we're going to sharpen that up. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's about all you need. And that side is done. And again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that side's done. Now, one, two, Three, four, less pressure, one, two, and we are sharp. Okay. And then after that, what I'm going to do is wipe off the blade. Let's take a look at that edge. Now that's a very coarse edge. Very coarse, but then you just knock off the burn. One, two, three. 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 And we have a very sharp knife. One, two, three. 
One, two, three. Okay. Now, let me see. Not shaving yet. Not shaving hair yet. Let's see. It's actually been quite a while since I've freehanded um, sharpening a knife. Now this one here actually has no edge at all. No edge. So we're going to do this one again very quickly. So let me zoom that back out. We're going to do nice straight. there a little more needed on the end here okay got an edge then on this side we do the same try to keep that edge straight you can see how I'm bracing the knife with my right hand index finger knuckle and then I'm just using my thumb to hold the angle. All right. So now we have one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Two. Ooh, man. And then we're going to do the tip. Now on the tip, you're gonna actually feel both of those edges meet, which is a really weird thing when you really think about it. But you actually feel both of those edges actually meet. I don't know if that's coming out there, but you can see that I have met the edge there and now I want to just nice single passes. Now for this side, we're gonna make sure keeping that tip. Lower it just a little bit there. Let's see. All met. Two, three, one, two. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, cut my thumbnail, not my finger. Okay. This is actually um, how I would sharpen it, okay? Um, I'm not doing anything fancy not trying to do anything special. This is really how I would probably go about it. Um, so I'm sharpening his knife like it was my knife. So we're going to now go one, two, one, two, and we are good to go. So from here, we could do two things. Leave it the way it is, have a nice working edge, or we could flip this over, which is what I am going to do. I'm going to flip that over. We're going to use this fine side, which isn't really too fine. It's more of like a, I would probably say 600 grit. That other side was maybe like a two, 300. Pretty coarse, pretty coarse stuff. Maybe, maybe not that low. But then from here, we just do a pass. One, two, three, four, five. And we are good. One, two, three, four, five. And on the back, one, two, three, 
and one and two. Whoa. All right. Now that there, that there is, that there's hair shaving. A rough edge, um, I will admit, but it it's doing the job. It is shaving hair, which I have just gotten all over my stone now. So just kind of pull all that off. And now we are going to finish up the other blade. Now these knives are actually not horrible knives. Um, they really do get a bad rap just because of how cheaply made they are, but they're actually not too bad. Now this is just a sheep's foot blade, so I'm just going to try and keep my hand as flat as I can. Oh, yeah. And then finish that one. getting there. Okay. And not hair shaving sharp yet, but almost there. One, two, Okay. Now I know this is a long video. I don't expect you guys to stay through the whole thing. But we are on the cusp. We're on the very edge, literally, of this thing being hair shaving. It's rough, but it does it. And if it can cut your hair off, that means it's pretty bloody sharp, if you ask me. So really quick, let's take a look at these edges. There's that one, and there's that side. And then we'll take a look at the hawkbill. I'll probably refine that just a little bit. And then the main. It's probably got some gunk on it still. But not too bad. Well, I will refine this and strop it up, but it's pretty much finished. Now, there's one last edge here, and that is of the awl. And really, the awl only needs a touch up. So, really, just one, two, three. Four, five, six, and that is it for the all. Almost it. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to flip this over because I want that all to be, I want that to be perfect. Okay. I'm quickly going to do this all because my phone is about to die. So really quick.
And that's the edge. And you know what? This isn't a very sharp awl. It's not a very good point. Could make it pointier, but the edge is pretty darn good now. So I think I will probably leave that. Knock the edge burr off. And then, yeah, and then call that a day. So I'm sorry this was a long one. Um, he wanted a detailed video and he wanted to see me sharpen it. So yeah, that is the video for this one. I'll get this all cleaned up and oiled and shipped back to him. But thank you again for letting me take a look at your knife. Um, don't pass these up. These are good knives. They are very good knives for the money you pay. I mean, you can get these for almost eight bucks. So till the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.